Después de hablar en, en inglés, quiero también hablar un poquito en español. The feast that we celebrate tonight, the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, is a very ancient one, and I'll talk about that in a couple of different stages in just a second, but I wanted to draw your attention first to the reason for the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, or actually the reason for the Immaculate Conception. The words that we hear in the book of Genesis from God to Adam and Eve are what I think are the saddest words in the entire Bible. When God says to Adam and Eve, where are you? God, of course, knew exactly where they were. It's not a question, it's a statement. You are no longer with me because you have separated yourself from me by your sin. And because of that separation, Adam and Eve, if we remember, were kicked out of the garden. And Genesis goes on to describe that the gates of the garden were closed and entrance was no longer possible for anyone until the Savior was to come. So the Immaculate Conception, of course, was prepared by God from, from all eternity. He knew of what was going to happen. He knew how he was going to remedy the situation. And so he established things, arranged things in such a way that Mary would be born without the state of original sin. Now it's easy to confuse the Immaculate Conception with the miraculous conception of our Lord. The, the Immaculate Conception has to do with Mary's conception in the womb of her mother, Anne, 16 years or so before the Christ was to be born. The word Immaculate means without stain. And so, Mary was conceived without the stain of original sin, so that 16 years later, when she would become pregnant herself by the power of the Holy Spirit, that God, the Son, whom would become, who would become Jesus, when he took on her humanity, would not take on a stained humanity, because God and sin cannot come into contact with one another. So God arranged things in such a way that Mary was preserved free from the stain of original sin, so that when, by the power of the Holy Spirit, she conceived, when the Lord took his humanity from her, it would not be touched by sin. Because, of course, he was divine, he could not be touched by sin. Now, the miraculous conception of our Lord is different. When our Lord was conceived in the womb of the Virgin Mary, I should say first that Anne and Joachim, her husband, conceived Mary in the normal way, in the normal human way. But when our Lord was conceived, he was not conceived in the normal way. He was conceived miraculously by the power of the Holy Spirit without the help of a man. And so he was both divine and human, fully divine and fully human. Now the church officially declared the Immaculate Conception to be a church teaching only as late as 1864. However, throughout the whole history of the church, there was this constant belief, this constant capital T tradition, this apostolic tradition, that Mary had been preserved free from the state of original sin. And as early as the 7th century, there was a feast called the Feast of the Conception of Mary by Anne, uh, celebrated from the 7th century. Now, here's the interesting piece of the story. The church made this official declaration in 1864, I'm sorry, 1854, and four years later, in a little town called Lourdes in France, a young girl named Bernadette had a series of apparitions or visions from a lady. She described a lady in white. And she went to her parish priest to tell him that she had seen this lady in white. And the parish priest, to make a long story short, told her, go back and ask the lady what her name is. And so Bernadette dutifully went back and asked the lady what her name was. And the lady said, I am the Immaculate Conception. Now, Bernadette went to the priest and said, the lady said, I am the Immaculate Conception. And the priest, being sort of stunned by this news, said, do you have any idea what that means? Have you ever heard those words before? She said, no, I'm just telling you what the lady told me. So, we know the rest of the story of Bernadette. She was eventually canonized, but 
her apparitions of the Blessed Virgin Mary are perhaps the most famous of all the apparitions of the Virgin Mary, and they have in fact become the model to measure all other apparitions against. In any case, the, took, the Church took this apparition, these apparitions, as a divine stamp of approval of the Declaration of the Immaculate Conception in 1860, 1854, four years earlier. So the feast that we celebrate today is the completion of the long, long story that began with God's creation of Adam and Eve and their fall from grace and our Lord's suffering, death, and resurrection, which made possible our return to grace and our ability to get to heaven someday, God willing. Y pocas palabras por mis amigos hispanohablantes se puede confundir fácilmente la concepción inmaculada de María con la concepción miraculosa de Jesús. María fue concebida por la manera normal por sus padres Ana y Joaquín, pero por medio de la intercesión de Dios, María fue preservada de la mancha del pecado original. Esta preservación fue necesaria porque Dios no puede tocar o contactar pecado. Dios el Hijo, cuando se hizo hombre, tomó su humanidad de María. Y por supuesto, esta humanidad no podía ser manchada por el pecado. En vez, la miraculosa concepción de Jesús no pasó por la manera normal, sino por medio del poder del Espíritu Santo sin la ayuda de un hombre. La doctrina de la Concepción Inmaculada fue decorada oficialmente en 1854, pero la Iglesia celebraba una fiesta de la Concepción de María por Ana desde el siglo VII. Está muy interesante que en 1858 Cuatro años después de la declaración oficial de la Inmaculada Concepción, una chica de Lourdes, Francia, que se llamaba Bernadette, tenía una serie de visiones de una dona vestida en blanco. La corta versión del relato es que la dona se llamaba la Concepción Inmaculada. No era posible que Bernadette conocía estas palabras ni sus significanzas. Por eso, la Iglesia reconocía estas apariciones como una aprobación divina de la declaración oficial de, de la Inmaculada Concepción. Damos gracias hoy en día por el don del Salvador por María que hace posible nuestra liberación del pecado y nuestra posibilidad de santidad y del cielo.